Hello, welcome, and thank you so much for joining this presentation as we explore the iconic continent that is Europe. My name is David Craven. I'm one of the key account managers here at Princess Cruises, and I am delighted to discuss and explore this wonderful destination with you and why cruising with Princess could be the best way for you to do it. Now, there are a number of reasons why people choose cruising Europe. And I'd say the three core main reasons are this. It is so famous for its history and culture, whether it be Greek, whether it be Norse mythology. There is so much in this region, so much history to explore. And it is definitely one of the big drivers. Now, another one is, of course, the cuisine, uh, whether it be the fine dining of France, the more humble homestyle cooking of Italy, and of course, the legendary cuisine of England. Don't forget that Sunday roast. There is something for every single palate to explore and enjoy. And lastly, the landscapes of this uh, iconic continent. Uh, if you love sandy beaches, it's got it in spadefuls. If you want drama, you've got the, the, the valleys and the fjordlands of Norway. You've got glaciers. You have so much variety across all of Europe to explore. There is definitely something for everyone, uh, regardless of what it is that you like out of your holiday. Now, when we are talking about Europe, we're not just talking about the Mediterranean. Quite often people only go to the Mediterranean. We're talking about all of Europe. OK, now, when we're talking about cruising this region, the three main regions are the Mediterranean, UK and Northern Europe. The Mediterranean never really gets that cool. We're there typically April through till September. April through till June and September onwards are the cooler times to be there, around 24 degrees. July and August are definitely the hottest with an average of 32 degrees. Now, if you are flexible on your time and you wish to cruise in the Mediterranean, I would strongly recommend you avoid the July and August period. The reason is it is by far the hottest, which can get a little bit sticky because you want to wander the streets, you want to explore these uh, amazing destinations. So it is definitely the hottest, but it's also the busiest time. It's the Northern Hemisphere summer holidays. So there are more tourists. There are more people there during those months. So if you are flexible, I strongly recommend you, uh, you visit that destination in the shoulder seasons, kind of April, late September. Super time to be there to make sure you're getting the most out of that destination. The UK is always kind of mild, never gets too hot, never gets too cold. April and May are the dampest and mildest, average temperature of 20 degrees. And then June through August are the driest and warmest months. Average temperature is around 23, 25 degrees. Bear in mind, a British 25 degrees is a lot hotter than an Australian one. And lastly, the Northern Europe parts, we're talking Baltic, we're talking North Sea, Iceland, Norway. Uh, the May through July, the dry months, average temperatures around 15 degrees. August, September begin to get a little bit wetter. Uh, average temperature is very similar at a solid 16 degrees. Now, it doesn't really matter where in the continent you are looking to explore. We have got you covered. We have more than 100 cruise destinations that we visit. We have more than 220 to departures to choose from. So they're the different itineraries. There are so much variety depending on where it is that you'd like to explore. And for our 2025 season, we have six ships in the region. For 2026, we have five ships in the region. And it doesn't actually matter uh, when it is that you're cruising, 25 or 26, or indeed which princess ship you are cruising, you are going to receive a consistent, fantastic princess experience. Expect the super premium culinary delights. Expect world-class entertainment, all underpinned by our medallion-class technology. So the medallion is this very small uh, kind of device. It's about the size of a collar, uh, a dollar coin, sorry. Uh, this is your private concierge whilst on board. The door opens for you, your cabin door when you come back to it because you've got the medallion. You order food and drinks through your device. We bring it to you. The whole idea of the medallion is empowering our crew to deliver the best service to our guests. That's what it's all about. And we're seeing a number of people now choosing their holiday with Princess, not necessarily just cruise, their holiday with us, quite simply because of this medallion class technology. Once you experience it, you kind of never look back.
Now, it doesn't matter which princess ship you are cruising on, you will receive a fantastic experience. But we have in this region our latest ship, the Sun Princess, the next generation of princess cruises, our new sphere class. She was launched in March of this year, offering more dining, more bar venues, more entertainment options than ever before, more stateroom categories. And she is the largest ship that we've ever had in the fleet. Sometimes people see the biggest ship is bigger, always better. People do feel a little bit apprehensive. I've been very lucky to cruise on the ship twice now, once in March and once in August. Despite her being a big ship, you never, ever feel that there are a lot of people on the ship. That's just not how it feels whatsoever. We had multiple tenders, never struggled getting the tender. We never struggled getting a seat in the theatre, never struggled to see the entertainment in the piazza, never struggled to get a sunbed by the pool. Despite it being a big ship, it has been designed so well uh, that you are not overwhelmed by lots and lots of passengers. She's also powered by liquefied natural gas, so she is our most environmenta environmentally friendly vessel in the fleet. Now, being a new ship, she has some new venues. We've reimagined our dining, our included dining, main dining rooms. Uh, that picture there on the bottom right side is Horizons Dining Room, located on deck six and deck seven, all the way at the back of the ship. They've got these beautiful vaulted glass uh, kind of floor to ceiling windows, letting in all that natural light beautiful space to have dinner or indeed breakfast or lunch. Now, of course, that at the very front of the vessel uh, is very, very eye-catching and it's one of the things that many people kind of comment. It's called the dome and one of the reasons why the ship is called Sphere Class. Uh, during the daytime, it's an air-conditioned venue where you can enjoy, you know, reading a book, grab a, grab a drink, uh, relax, go for a swim in that pool, and then you can actually swim underneath that screen that you can see there. That will bring you outside where you can sunbathe. There's bars out there so you can grab a drink, and you know, if it gets too hot, come back inside, enjoy that air conditioned venue. That is during the daytime, but by during the night, it is an entertainment venue offering the acrobatics and just awe inspiring talents of Cirque LORs. Absolutely amazing talent from Canada. Uh, they also offer shows in the Piazza as well. The picture there on the top right hand side is our new reimagined Princess Theatre, now called the Princess Arena. Now, the great benefits of having this multifaceted space means we can adapt the venue based on the entertainment. So you can see here, this is much more of a rotunda style. Ideal for musicians, magicians and comedians, right in the heart of all the audience. So it's much more personal, much more interactive. It's fantastic. Then what we can do, we can change the space. So we actually introduce uh, a larger um, stage. Perfect then for our production shows. It's a really, really great venue. And we have the newest and most modern, most unbelievable entertainment I've ever seen uh, Princess ever offer. We have developed a new era of accommodation offerings. Expect the classics of interiors, ocean views, balconies, but we've got some new categories as well. Regardless of what cabin type you're going to be cruising in, whether it be an interior, a balcony, or a suite, every single cabin type has been reimagined, reconfigured, so we're giving more space back to passengers, okay? What this means is every single cabin type has a sofa, for instance. We can only do that because we've reconfigured the space. Much bigger state rooms, and when other cruise lines are getting bigger ships, the cabin sizes are actually getting smaller. We've gone the opposite way. We're giving more space back, giving uh, more space into that cabin, which is fantastic. We've got new cabin types, uh, the Cove balcony, which is basically a framed balcony, a typical balcony as you normally would, but it's just got a bit of a protectional frame around the edges there because they're a little bit lower down on deck six just to protect you from any potential sea spray. But excitingly on the Sun Princess, we have just launched our cabana class. Now, obviously, we want to sit outside and enjoy the sun on a balcony, but sometimes Mother Nature uh, has got other ideas for us. So you can see here, the cabana class has an extended balcony. So if the weather's not too good, you can close that outdoor uh, glass door and still enjoy that kind of day bed, still have a balcony experience, but protecting you from the weather. If the weather's gorgeous, open up all the doors and you now have that extended balcony, which is superb. Anyone staying in the cabana class, 
All those cabins are located on deck nine and you have exclusive access to the cabana retreat. That is exclusively for these cabin types only, kind of like a ship within a ship experience. Now, speaking of that, we have recently just launched our sanctuary collection exclusively on the Sun Princess. This is only applicable to certain balcony types, certain mini suites, as well as a limited amount of our suite categories. Now, this sanctuary collection is designed to offer the ultimate experience, ship within a ship experience, okay? So you're going to have your own private restaurant with an enhanced menu offering every single day, but you also have Princess Premier as a fair type included in every single sanctuary collection booking. We'll talk about what that means, Ultimately, it's an all-inclusive experience, all your drinks and all your meals, but we'll talk about it in a moment. But you'll also have exclusive access to the Sanctuary Club, which is that picture on the bottom right-hand side of the screen there. This is your very own retreat exclusively for the Sanctuary Collection. You've got your own cabanas, your own pool, your own haven, so you can soak up that Mediterranean sun at your leisure. So if you're celebrating something or, you know, if it's a, an anniversary, a honeymoon, I think the Sanctuary Collection might, might be uh, the one for you. Now, of course, with cruising, it's synonymous with food. Uh, the average cruiser puts on two and a half pounds every single seven days, believe it or not. Quite often we set sail as the love boat and return as the tugboat. But we figured, look, if people like to enjoy their cuisine on board, let's give them more variety. So on board the Sun Princess, there are more than 30 restaurant and bar offerings. We have brand new specialty restaurants in Umai, Teppanyaki, as well as the Chinese hot pot. Uh, the Teppanyaki is so much fun. The chefs are just great entertainers and the food, the food is exquisite. But it's not just about specialty dining and paid dining. There are more included dining options on the Sun Princess than ever before. We've got Lido Tacos offering tacos and nachos, as well as lamb shawarma, which is beautiful. We've got Lido Greens, uh, which is, you know, what you'd expect it to be, a salad bar. Believe it or not, I absolutely fell in love with this place. Every single day I was on the Sun Princess, that was my lunch every single day. There are, I think, four or five classic salads that you can choose, or you can literally say, I want this, I want this, I want this, and you can create your own uh, bespoke salad. Beautiful, fresh ingredients, really ideal, especially on a hot, sunny day. Of course, we've got your pizzeria, we've got your burgers and things like that by the pool, as well as Swirls ice cream. But also downstairs on deck nine, we have moved the location of our kind of buffet style dining. That's known as World Fresh Marketplace on other ships. On this class of ship, it's called the Eatery. So that's located on deck nine towards the back end of the vessel. Uh, and then just past the Eatery, we've also got the brand new All American Diner. This is offering American style brunch uh, dishes. So expect chicken and waffles, chicken wings, things like that. That's right next to the eatery. So this is all included dining. And what I love about the eatery and the American diner is they have lots of al fresco dining as well. So if you want to sit inside and have some food, absolutely fine. But if you're like me, you want to get outside. I want to hear the waves. I want to enjoy the sun. Plenty of al fresco dining. It's absolutely superb. Now, the Star Princess will be joining us in October next year, 2025, offering seven and 11 night Mediterranean cruises from Barcelona before undertaking her iconic cruise across the transatlantic to the Caribbean, where she will undertake her season there before then migrating to Alaska for 2026. But what I wanted to talk about is our bundles, Princess Plus and Princess Premier. Now, uh, here at Princess, we're firm believers of offering variety so that people can curate their cruise as they see it, okay? So Princess Plus is 65 Australian dollars per person per day, includes your Wi-Fi, juice bar, premium desserts, two a day, two per, uh, two cruises, sorry, two fitness classes per cruise, sorry, sir. Uh, casual dining, you get two of those per cruise, but you also get your Princess Plus beverage package, which includes unlimited soft drinks, bottled water, teas, coffees, things like that, but also includes up to 15 alcoholic beverages up to the cost of 22 Australian dollars 
per person per day. Princess Premier, which is what is included in that sanctuary collection, this is included in your fair. If you wish to actually add this into your fair and not staying in the sanctuary collection, this is a hundred Australian dollars per person per day. This includes four devices for your Wi-Fi package, unlimited juice bar, unlimited premium desserts, unlimited casual dining, unlimited specialty dining, reserved theatres, uh, theatre seating for the production shows, and unlimited alcoholic beverages with the premier beverage package up to the value of 30 Australian dollars. Now, what I just wanted to highlight is that dollar value is when we're talking about Australian ships that are cruising in our waters, because those ships on board, the currency is Australian dollars. This presentation is all about Europe. Europe has USD currency on board their ships. So when we're talking about the Princess Plus beverage package, so instead of 22 Australian dollars, it's USD currency on board. It's up to the value of 15 US dollars. Princess Premier is up to the value of 20 US dollars, okay? Because it's a US dollar ship. Now, when we're talking about US dollars right now, the US dollar is so strong against the Aussie dollar, it's basically two for one, okay? And this is where locking it in AUD before you go, you can save an absolute fortune. So if we were to take, as an example, Princess Premier up to the value of 30 Australian dollars in our waters, internationally it's 20 US dollars because it's two for one, that's actually 40 Aussie dollars. So if you get that glass of wine that is 20 US dollars, it's actually 40 dollars. And if you get a specialty dining whilst on board, the average cost for a specialty dining, $59. US, that's over $100 Australian. So just having a glass of wine in a specialty restaurant will actually save you an absolute fortune, despite having all the desserts, the juice bar, the theatre, all of your photos, all of these things. The value speaks for itself. And right now with that currency exchange, it speaks more value than ever before. We're very, very proud of the, uh, of the, the value proposition that they offer. But with that exchange rate at the moment, it's uh, kind of never spoken spoken quite like this before. So definitely lock it in Aussie dollars and don't succumb to that exchange rate. Let's have a look at some of the itineraries for 2025. We have more than 106 destinations to explore, more than 180 departure choices. We'll have six ships in this region. And in 2026, we will have five ships in the region, but we'll offer 222 different departure points. You'll see the departure ports. What that means is this is where you're going to embark the ship to do your cruise. You can cruise from Athens, Barcelona, as well as Rome. They're the ones in the Mediterranean. We're back with our Baltic season for 2026. So you can do cruises from Copenhagen. We also offer repositioning cruises from Fort Lauderdale, Port Canaveral, as well as Buenos Aires in South America. That's a really, really cool itinerary. Uh, but we've literally got all of Europe covered. So if you want to do somewhere a little bit different, if you want to go to the Baltic, if you want to go to Greenland, you want to go to Iceland, you want to go to the Canary Islands, there is something uh, for absolutely everyone. Now, obviously, with the number of cruise offerings, there's no way I can talk about all of these different destinations and all of the different cruises. So what I've done is select some of my favorites and broken it down for each of the destinations. So when we're talking about the Mediterranean, depending on how long you wish to go for, we have anything from a seven-night cruise. An example there is Rome to Athens on the Sun Princess. That is sailing in both 2025 as well as 2026. Taking off some of those iconic destinations, we've got Mykonos, beautiful Greek island. We've got Istanbul, one of my favorite places in the entire world. If you want to go for a little bit longer, we've got that two-week option, which I think is really, really cool. Technically, it's two cruises back-to-back, -back, two seven nights back-to-back, -back, but you can book this as a 14-night cruise aboard the Sapphire Princess in 2026. This is going to get you into some of those more kind of hidden gems of the Mediterranean. One of my personal favorites is Malta, an absolute jewel of the Med. And for the first time, we're going to Sarande in Albania. Absolutely stunning coastline, beautiful part of the Mediterranean. 
And if you want to go for longer, you can do a 21-night cruise from Rome, Athens, or Barcelona. This is a three-week cruise. This is available on the sun in 25 or 26. But when we're talking about the Mediterranean, remember, you don't have to be in the Mediterranean to cruise the Mediterranean. If you're going to back to going back to visit friends or family, or if you just want to explore the UK itself, you can cruise the Mediterranean in 25 or 26 with a 14-night cruise that is uh, highlighted here on board the Sky Princess, ticking off the gorgeous ports in the Western Mediterranean. Now, speaking of the British Isles, we have lots of cruises here. What you will see is they are somewhat similar they're just ever so slightly nuanced depending on where it is that you would really love to see so if you want to be quite irish intensive then we can do that if it's more scottish intensive we can do that or if you actually wanted to to potentially visit down into paris then we have cruises which visit la havre so that's the gateway down to paris there or potentially if you wish to visit uh, normandy for the, the, the history buffs and the military buffs. Uh, it's a beautiful part of France, very sombering, and we offer some really great shore excursions. But when we're talking about British Isles cruises, uh, lots of people are visiting this part of um, the world in August for the Scottish military tattoo. Now, during this month, what you are looking for are the late night departures from Greenock or Queen's Ferry. This will give you the opportunity to visit the Edinburgh, uh, the Scottish military tattoo in Edinburgh, uh, considered one of the world's most iconic festivals. Now, you can see a rough price point there. I wouldn't say it's the cheapest, don't get me wrong. But this is literally ringside tickets. This is fully catered, fully taken care of. This is a very difficult ticket to get. Uh, so this is a really wonderful way to, to visit that amazing event up in Edinburgh. And lastly, one of my favorite parts in the entire world is Northern Europe. Uh, we are back to the Baltic region in 2026, but in 2025, you can still visit these amazing countries uh, just round trip from Southampton. Depending on how long you have, we have seven night cruises, 14 night cruises. There's that really interesting 10 night cruise on the Majestic sailing in June of 2026. That's visiting places like Belgium and the Netherlands, some wonderful places. But if you've got the time, that four-week cruise departing on May the 30th in 2026 will take in the very best of the Baltic, as well as all of those beautiful ports of call along the west coast of Norway. Absolutely incredible cruise. Lots of people wish to see lots of Norway, but also... Potentially, you want one of those people. I'm one of them. I like to tick off countries. I want to visit as much of this world as physically possible. I want to get to some of those hard to reach destinations. If you are one of those people, then why not places like Iceland and Greenland? Amazing places. There's just nowhere else on planet Earth quite like Iceland. And when we're visiting places like Iceland, we're not just going to Reykjavik and then saying, you know, it's a tick in a box. We've been there. We're doing at least three ports of call to make sure you're getting the very most out of this incredible destination. That cruise on the top right hand side is the on the 27th of September 2025, 14 night cruise, which has an overnight in Alta in Norway. The reason why we're doing that is to give you the very best chance to see the Northern Lights. So if you would love to see the Northern Lights, that is the cruise for you. Two week cruise on the Emerald Princess departing September the 27th, 2025. If you want to go for longer or utilize the ship as a repositioning vessel, then we offer so many different, so many different um, cruises. We've got 50 night cruises. Personally, the one that stands out for me is that 33-night cruise from Rome to Boston on board the Majestic Princess. Just an unbelievable cruise taken in the best of the Mediterranean, the British Isles, Iceland, before discovering the east coast of Canada, which is one of the most underrated places in all of the world. If you want to extend your cruise experience, then why not book a cruise tour? This is a land and sea component, all booked as one package all one price, all organized by Princess, makes it easier for you. We offer these in Ireland for the British Isles cruise, in Spain, in Italy, in Greece for 2025. And for 2026, we offer even more options, including uh, the beautiful imperial treasures of Europe, which is two nights in Budapest, 
two nights in Vienna, two nights in Prague, two nights in Berlin before undertaking a beautiful Baltic cruise on the Sapphire Princess. If you wish to learn more about these, speak to your travel agent. And what is really important is that you're booking nice and early. Now, we started back in May our best price guarantee. What this ensures is that you are getting the very best price by booking early. OK, if when you book, you find a better price up to the day of final payment, we'll refund 120 percent of the difference as onboard credit. We guarantee you are going to get the best price by booking early. So reach out to your travel agent, lock in your cruise. Don't wait. We still have availability for 2025, but it is it's definitely dwindling. People are booking early. We've got 2026 out, so book further in the future. And with that, I cannot wait to welcome you back on board a princess ship or potentially for the very first time exploring this amazing destination. I'll leave you with a very short video highlighting Northern Europe. But if you have any questions, please reach out to your travel agent. And we cannot wait to welcome you aboard the Love Bell. Thank you and goodbye.